Okay. There we go. We're live. Welcome, everybody, to the video. And welcome back, Edwards. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me again. And hello, everyone. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Now, what we wanted to do for this video is do a hands-on demonstration of how to test silver using a testing kit. That's it's right. something that I'm really interested in, and I know a lot of other people have a lot of questions around that. And you've been doing this for years, right? So you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've been doing this a long, long time, testing uh, testing precious metals and that. you got to, you got to know what you're buying, make the money. Exactly. So we're going to crack on with that very soon. We are live, but we're going to take some questions maybe at the end. We want to get through this demonstration. I'll probably have questions as we go, and I know Edward's going to try and explain how it all works. <laughs> so should we just crack on and you can explain how we're going to do this? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so basically we're going to be testing sterling silver from silver plate um, using chemical reaction from acids. Now, my acids are getting a little old and they're unreliable. They can get contaminated or you don't get the same result if they get a bit old. So I've actually bought a brand new set for today's film. Now, I believe you've put the link for this set in the uh, description. Yeah, the link should be below if you want to go and check it out. Now, what this set consists of, first of all, you've got your three sets of acids, which we're going to look at in a minute. I'm just going to make you full screen it for a minute. Is that right? Yeah, it's fine, mate. So, here with me. So, we've obviously got the three sets of acids, which I'll talk about in a minute, but we've also got the precious metal testing guide which talks to you about all the different tests and how to test gold, silver, nickel, palladium, everything. Now, today, we're going to be concentrating just on silver. And everything you want is in here, showing you all the different results. So that's a really good resourceful tool. As well as the booklet, they also send you this, which is, I just opened this glass container. Should have done that sooner. <laughs> right. So what you get here, you get a magnet, a very strong magnet, mm -hmm. and a file. Now, the reason for a magnet is when you got white metal, you got multiple options. But you got stainless steel or steel, silver plate, or you got sterling silver or other grades of silver. And the idea of the magnet is if you put the magnet on there, if it's steel, it will stick to the, um, the item. Yep. If it's not steel, uh, if it doesn't stick, then it's going to be silver plate or silver. Now, silver plate is mainly on copper or brass, so it's a non-ferrous metal, so it doesn't attract a magnet. So the magnet's good for detecting stainless steel or really cheap base metal products. So we'll put the magnet aside. Well, in fact, I'll show you the magnet. One item here doesn't stick to silver plate and doesn't stick to silver. All right, so that's your magnet gone. Also gives you this little file, small little pocket file. Personally, I got my own sets. I, uh, I carry these in my bag all the time when I go out. I got a variety of them. But for today's purpose, we got this little file here. And that is so you can file your item. Now, if you're filing your item, the last thing you want to do, let's say we got this spoon, for example, the last thing you want to do is file a big gouge somewhere it's going to be visible. Yeah. So, or if it's a piece of jewelry or whatever, you want to file underneath or on the back in a small spot away from any joints. Because if you if you acid test on a joint, you're going to get a, a false reading because of the solder. Um, and you want obviously you want to make the testing as small as possible because you don't want to damage the items. Filing will damage the item. Acid testing doesn't, but filing will damage the item. So do it as small as you can in an inconspicuous spot as you can. So that's the idea of the file. So uh, let me just ask a dark question. Yep. Um, why do you have to file anyway? Because if you put the chemical on the silver, it's touching the silver. What's the... The idea is the silver plate, you want to get through the thin micro layer of silver plate oh, so okay. it can react with the metal underneath. Right. That's why you file. If you just put it onto the silver plate, it's going to react the same as on sterling silver because it's okay. on silver. So yeah. you file through the surface. Yeah. Silver plate has only got a very thin micro uh, layer of silver on it. So a little file, you get through it. Sheffield plate and things, antique Sheffield plate is a lot harder to test. You've got to go deeper. 
because mm-hmm. Sheffield plates basically two layers of silver, a layer of copper, and they sandwich them together. So all, all the stuff you've got to go deeper. So if you're not careful, you could do a test. And if you haven't filed deep enough, you could say, I've got a solid silver spoon here. Yeah, and, and it could still be wrong. yeah, it could still be an early Sheffield plate. So you've got to go deep enough. Right. Or until you see a different colour. Obviously, sure. I don't mean file halfway through. Just give it a good file. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and these so are the things the like, I guess once you've tried it out a few times, this will be clearer once you've actually had it hands on. You'll you'll see what you mean. You'll see how easy this test is now, honest to God. It is so easy. But what I would recommend people do, go to a car boot sale or a charity shop, buy yourself some silver plate from their junk box, 10 pence, 50 pence, and play with it and play with the assets. Mm-hmm. That's what I would recommend they do. Do not go testing fine jewellery or fine antiques until you know what you're doing. Have a play first. Okay. And don't do what I do. Wear gloves. <laughs> right. And also, you you held that up earlier. So this one set, the the one that we've linked, that that we're gonna we're only talking about silver today, but that's also for like you, you listed gold and palladium. That's this, all in there. Or... This set will do nine karat gold. Well, all the carats are gold. It'll do palladium and it'll do silver. Okay. I'll actually gonna show you how to test silver with the silver acid and the gold acid. That's why I've got this set, because you can test with both. And I actually prefer to test silver with the gold acid, not the silver acid, personally. Oh, okay. You'll see why later on. It's a much clearer indication of silver and base okay. metal compared to the silver acid. All right. So, anyway, I'll open these up. You can see they're all brand new. And they, they obviously seal them well. If you're going to carry these out and about when you go reselling, make sure you put them in a container. So the set comprises of a 9 carat acid, 14 to 24 carat, and your silver acid. Now, I want to screen share in a minute. The first piece we're going to do is this. This is a piece of solid silver. Um, I'm going to share the hallmarks just so you can actually see the silver. If you screen share for a minute, Nick. Yeah. There is the hallmarks there. So you've got the lion pattern. You've got George III. This spoon actually dates to 1816 and is by Solomon Human. That's a big, that right. a, a big chunk of silver than that, if that's solid. Yeah. This is a uh, quarter of a kilo of silver. Jeez. <laughs> So let me take that back off there. So you can take this screen share down. Yeah. Right. So that's this big spoon. It's a big, massive serving spoon. I didn't want, I'm not going to file into it. I wanted to show you the hallmarks so you can see this one is actually solid silver. That way I'm not going to file it. So I'm going to test this one first. And then what we're going to do then, I've got the sugar tongs, our silver plate, and I'm going to file these, show you filing them and show you testing them. So what we'll do, we'll start off. I'll turn the camera down and we're going to test the silver, show you the reactions on the silver. And then I'm going to talk to you about cleaning the testing solution off the silver because it's going to stain the silver. Okay. So I'll turn that down now. So bear with me with the camera, guys. Sorry. Right. So that looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, I can see that clearly. Right. So... Obviously, as I've said, I'm not going to um, scratch into my spoon. It's a 200-year-old spoon and worth quite a bit of money. Actually, I'm going to use a flat piece. So what I'm going to do, this is the actual silver acid. And I'm going to put that just by there. Now, the reaction you're looking for is for it to go red, which you can clearly see. Yeah, that went red instantly. So what colors the liquid? Is it clear before you put it in? Put it on. It, it's not clear. It's a ready color. Yeah. Uh, and if I show you in the book, the testing book here, bear with me, that's the different colors there. So you got blue would be base metal, green would be base metal, yellow would be stainless steel or gold, because you get white gold, obviously. And then red is for silver. So okay. as you can see, you clearly got that. That went red straight away. And if I use a bit of toilet roll, yeah, it looks off. almost black in on the screen, I guess. Yeah. 
you also got to look at the color that it comes off the uh, thing. Now you can see there the white stain. Yeah. I'm going to show you how to clean them off in a minute. But before I do, I want to show you the nine carat gold at test. And this is going to burn white. You can see that burning and bubbling up white. Yeah. You you have a look at the difference now when I do the sugar tongs. And now look at that burn. Oh, yeah. That's not good. Well, it's not brilliant, but it'll come <laughs> off. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. So we now, to look at these sugar tongs, you wouldn't really know they're not silver unless you know the hallmarks and things like that. Or if they're not hallmarked, you wouldn't know. So, and I don't care about these, test in a decent spot. Don't do what I'm doing. This is for testing purposes. Just so that you can see tidy. Right, I'm going to test first with the nine carat gold acid. Can you see the green? Yeah. And not only the green, if you look closely enough, it should be smoking. Oh, really? Yeah, you can't, it's not picking up on the camera, but I've actually got smoke or fumes coming off this green. And then, of course, when you wipe it away, you've got the green then on the cloth. Now, if I turn it over, and I'll go to this side, and we'll test it with the silver acid. Now, this should theoretically go blue. And that's because the base metal underneath. Yes. Yeah. But you'll see why I like testing with the gold acid because it gives a much clearer indication. So let me see. Now, this is staying uh, pretty much yellowy. It's not really yeah. reacting the way the gold, uh, the gold acid does. Now, if you look at that, Possibly gold or stainless steel, according to the book. But it clearly isn't. This is brass, silver plate on brass. That's why I use the gold acid. So the silver acid works to identify the silver. It's just not as good. You can clearly yeah. see the difference there. The yeah, one's totally. burning white. The other one's bubbling up green. Yeah, that's much better. That's why I use the gold acid. But the silver acid does work to identify the silver. I did just find some of the base metals it doesn't react with as well as others. But at the same time, it didn't go bright red like you're supposed to. So you could clearly see it wasn't silver. Yeah. So it's interesting that they have the two separate testing bottles when, when one would do for both. Uh, bear with me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Yeah. Um... Oh, sorry. What did sorry. I do there? What did I do there? Does... I always mess it up at some point. <laughs> yeah. So you can so you... do it with um, the gold acid. The reason people use the silver acid is because not all silver, uh, some of the silver, if it's a lower grade, will still bubble up green with the gold acid. Whereas with this one, it will still go red if it's a lower grade of silver. That's why you need them both. You still should test with the silver acid mm. because let's say it's 800 grade or something like that. You'll still get it going red because of a lower grade where it could be 800 grade mixed with a bit of junk, a bit of copper or whatever. And then this acid's going to bubble up green. So you've got to be careful in that aspect. Uh, but for a quick guide, I tend to take this one, the gold one, to the boot sale. When I get home, then I'll test with both. But I do like to test with both. And I use this one for a quick result. But if I show you now the marks on here, once you've tested it, you want to uh, make sure that you can resell it. You can see the burns. Yeah, that looks terrible. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't advise anybody use this brasso. Don't anybody use this on silver. I To clean your silver, I use Goddard's silver foam. It's very soft or even use dips or chemical reaction with baking soda. But I use this just to clean off my acid testing mark. So it's just a little bit of wad in. <coughs> so which one of those two are you using, sorry? The wad in at the moment. This one, which but is it, the... 
Brasso. The Brasso. Oh, it is the Brasso. Okay. And it is proper Brasso. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that worked. And that took seconds. If I do it tidy, you can still see a resemblance remains of a mark. But if I go over it tidy for a minute, literally it takes every single thing off. There is no markings left. But what you got to be careful, Brasso will damage your silver. Silver is very, very soft. Um, Brasso will literally wear the silver away. So what you have to do is just remove the marks and mm. then you're done. Yeah. Okay. Little dealer trick there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then no evidence of testing. It really is that simple. Okay, cool. So do the, do the, um, the shops and the, the, the kind of big dealers, do they use the same technique or is this like a kind of entry level? Well, I, on the video we spoke to, uh, we spoke about uh, the whole market and how to identify them last time on your channel. I mentioned Bojangles. Now, they are a million pound company or multi-million pound company. They, they buy stuff off people for thousands and thousands and thousands every day and they use the same assets. Yeah. Okay. I've gone up there and they'll just dip it, wipe it with acid and test it. So it's not just resellers and small time people like myself, proper companies use this and have done for the last hundred years. This yeah. is a well established um, testing means. And for somebody like myself, who's just starting to experiment a bit, I guess if I bought one of these kits, it'd last me for years, surely. I mean, how Believe long? Not, I'm a dealer, right? And you put the smallest, you can imagine this is probably, I don't know, 30 mil, 40 mil, I don't bloody know. It doesn't say on there. Uh, it's a decent sized bottle, right? And you put, you just squeeze it until you get the tiniest of ball. It doesn't even drop off the end, tiniest of ball on the end, and then you just touch the product. Bear in mind, I done that excessively for the video purposes. Yeah. Normally when I test, I find a tiny little spot somewhere file it tiniest amount on and look under an eyeglass you can't even see what i've tested it for a couple yeah. of reasons one if it comes up a silver plate i don't want them to know i've tested it so i can resell it on at a car boot sale or something so and i leave it to them to decide what it is or if it is silver i don't want to damage it yeah so my testing is so small a bottle well i just changed my bottles now for the purpose of the video um, I got a bottle around here somewhere, and I'll show you how all the bottles if I can find it. I was just thinking um, price wise, because I'm probably going to get one anyway. I mean, it's what did we say about twenty three pounds or so? That sounds like a pretty good investment if it's going to last me a long time. Let me show you how old my bot my old bottle was. Oh wow, yeah, completely different shape and everything. Uh, it's not just look how worn it is. That bottle's probably two year old or three year old. That looks like eye drops to me. <laughs> yeah, don't use them as eye drops. Look at the difference. Yeah. So you, you said about using gloves. I mean, are these, I'm assuming they're dangerous chemicals because they're acid. They are dangerous chemicals. Uh, don't get them in your eyes, whatever you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, what tends to happen? I'm at the boot sale and I'm so used to using these now. I just literally at a car boot sale. Uh, or I'll give it a quick file and I'll acid on it. But what it does, it burns your skin. And you'll literally be there peeling your skin off. Literally, mm. you'll be peeling the layers of your skin off. I've done it hundreds of times. Right. right? Um, what I tend to do, once I've acid tested, because I'm out on the move, I use wet wipes. I just wipe it off with a wet wipe uh, once I've tested it. And it sort of wipes all the acid up. But carry them in a, get yourself a little Tupperware tub, Put them in a bag, in like a money bag or something, carry them in a Tupperware tub because I have had them leak. I had them in my pocket once. They leaked all down my thigh and I lost all the skin off my thigh about six years ago, seven years ago. Wow. That literally was like pouring battery acid on myself, let me tell you. Yeah. Couldn't get it off quick enough. So carry them safely uh, in a bag uh, or in a bag and in a tub, whatever. If, you, if you're unsure of them, to be honest, I would recommend you use gloves. Little surgical gloves, you can buy them you know, 100 for two quid sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for me, I don't want to stand at a stall where I want to be moving and I just, yeah, can I test this? You know, it's a bit expensive. Can I test it if you think it's silver? Yeah, no problem. No, it's play it. So <laughs> at the stall then, you'll be there 
yeah, yeah. yeah, if, they okay. try, if they're trying to sell something to me and say, no, that's silver, and I say to them, well, I tell you what, if it's silver, I will buy it at your 10 or 20 pound, whatever, as long as you let me test it. I, many of them have let me test it at the store. I'm not, I'm not shy. Yeah. If it's at the right price, that it's not a gamble anyway. I don't care. I will literally just take it and go and test it in the car. Yeah. Uh, or if I don't want them to know. Uh, I bought an inkwell back about two years ago, and the hallmarks were seriously rubbed. And I only paid a fiver for it, but it was like a kilo, kilo and a half of silver. I tested that when I got back to the car, and that was happy days. And that came in for fiver. And when you consider even scrap silver is like three, four hundred pound a kilo. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of money. Okay. You really do need these assets. As I said before on the last video, most silver now has to be hallmarked by law. Well, all silver has to be hallmarked by law. But there's a lot of older silver or foreign silver that hasn't been marked or the marks are just worn off. Right. So these test my... tickets are important. Yeah, that was my next question, really, because as we discussed in the last video, if you teach yourself the basics of hallmarks, you, you kind of know when you've got solid silver in your hand. But that's another reason for having the testing kit, I guess, because you, you're armed then to find to be able to test stuff that isn't hallmarked or well, is foreign or, or whatever. What you find, I don't know if you ever watched these TV shows and that, um, and they pick stuff up and they say the hallmarks are almost worn off or I can't see the date letter. That's through mm. over or excessive cleaning. The more you clean silver, the more you wear it away. You're literally taking a surface off every time you clean it, more or less. And if you imagine 100 years or 200 years of cleaning silver, the hallmark is gone. It's just right. disappeared. Okay. And you got the only way to know then is to acid test it. Yeah. You, know, you can't smell silver or silver plate. You really can't. Some people say, well, you can smell it or you can taste it, lick it. The only way to know for sure is acids. Right. You can actually have x-ray machines now if you're a big business, but we're not big business. No. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else you wanted to show as far as the demonstration goes, or should we take some questions? Um, well, was was the demonstration clear for you? Because I yeah. was aiming my demonstration at you. If you could see the difference and the reactions with the acid and how easy it was and the purpose behind it all, then I'm happy because yeah. I aimed it at you knowing you didn't know a lot about the silver. Well, I'll tell you what I was interested to see was was how just the physical bit of getting the liquid on there and the fact that it just stayed in a little bubble. Yep. I, I, I was imagining it running off and, and you having to, you know, but it but it just sat there in a little blob and, and the reaction came instantly. So, yeah, that was... I'll show you that, show you that again now. That was quite reassuring. Right. Yeah, let's Literally. do one more before we take some questions. Go full screen a second. Yeah, hold on. There you go. Right, so hopefully right, you literally get a bubble like that. You don't even let it drop, and then it's just touch it, touch. and you yeah. can see there how little. Well, you can't even see where it is. It's a yeah. little tiniest of bubble, and then yeah. it's on there. And it's pretty much it, yeah. Paper. yeah. Okay, even I could manage that. I think <laughs> the important thing is right. File in a safe place, right, and don't file too big. Right, you only need a little test. I've done this massive so the viewers can see on the film clearly how to do it for for example for for a, a, a little earring or a stud or something that's going to be tricky then is it because it's going to be so small would you then get an eyepiece and, and look at it closely to see the colors or if it was a earring um let's say something like this all right all you got to do then is get your file rub the bar on there and dip yeah. it in dip in a little bit of solution and see the end result right okay so, yeah or you could do the same you could you know you've got tiny things you can literally go on the very end now this acid you can put it onto a glass plate or a porcelain plate it will not react to the glaze and then mm. just dip your urine into it and look at the result down under an eyeglass okay easy very cool um let's see what the chat is saying um so peter is in uh so to test look for hallmarks first then do magnet and then acids yeah pretty yeah. much yeah um now i've heard about this um tinfoil and spit thing out Never in the heard of it. 
somebody was telling me that um, to get a bit of silver, and I think you rub it in silver foil and spit, and then you get an eggy smell as a reaction to silver or something. I don't know if it. Oh, I would. I wouldn't part with potentially good money and a yeah. lot of money on that basis. I really right. wouldn't. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I've never yeah. tried it, never heard about it. But if I'm at an antique fair and I see this spoon, now this is a Georgia third spoon, could potentially go for two or three, four hundred pounds. I'm not going to park 50 quid on the spit test. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Grantly, I'll go back through the chat in a second if there's questions we haven't seen. I'll just do the ones I can see here. Uh, Grantly Basham, welcome, says, what is the best magnet to get? Are there any special ones? Well, this set actually comes with a small magnet, but a magnet's a magnet. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So you could just whip a magnet off the back of a fridge magnet and you're good to go. A lot of people have a magnet on their car keys, so people don't realise what they're doing. Or they have a little magnet, and when they're going through jewellery boxes, they got the magnet you know, on their uh, wristwatch or whatever, and they literally just test stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and test as they go, because a lot of people like to discreetly go through jewellery boxes looking for gold and silver. Yeah. Uh, me, I just say, yeah, I'm after gold and silver, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But you know, people will hear it, and they'll test on a magnet before, and then me, I'll... Yeah. I've been doing it a long time. I'll just pull it out and eyeglass out if need be. Yeah, so just a tiny little one is all you need then, like the one in that kit. Yeah, you don't need one of these big horseshoes. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That'd be hilarious, mind. Hanging around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go back and see what else we've got. Um, if anybody, uh, you're looking, if anybody is interested, you need to go back and have a look at the video we done last week on identifying silver, because we talked uh, briefly about the different grades, sterling silver, 925 parts, all the way down to a 500 grade, and 800 grade, and so on, uh, and how to identify it. So check Nick's other film out, because that's yeah. a really good film on identification of hallmarks and how to identify sterling from silver plate and things. Yeah, that's still on the channel. It's probably about 10, 15 videos ago. Or just search Nick Hill Silver and it will come straight up. Um, Saz Guest is in. Hi. And says, what is the difference between Hallmark Silver and 925 Silver? None. A Hallmark is just a British standard. And the British standard of sterling silver is 925 parts. There is no difference. The Hallmark is just the assay saying this is 925 parts. It was Hallmarked in this area, whether it's Birmingham, London, you name it um and you get the maker and so forth that's all the whole market is it's just telling you the silver standard um paralogical says if it ain't hallmarked i walk away but you're losing a lot of money Maybe. i guarantee you're losing a lot of money um, oh, okay. silver okay. bangles and things i've i've bought you wouldn't believe it silver bangles even modern ones right a lot of them are not hallmarked they were but if you imagine years and years of women like this on their wrist, the marks disappear. Mm -hmm. I buy so much silver jewellery, whole bracelets and bangles and things, where the hallmark is worn because it's not always on the clasp. If it's a solid bangle, it's just on the inside. And constantly like this on their hand, it does yeah. silver away. I've had tons of the stuff. Well, do you remember the, the, the silver I auctioned off for charity and that you were bidding on? There were some of those, uh, the little salt and pepper pots that have clearly been polished to within an inch of their life. And the hallmarks on that were, were, were so barely visible. Like you said, I think they've just been polished for like 100 years. Yeah. And, and they were going. And that's not all everyday wear. So I can totally believe that. that. Um, Paralogical goes on to say, I own a small jewelry, silver jewellery shop, not on eBay. I buy from China. So there you go. Oh, Ali's in. Hi, Ali. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. Um, RJ was watching Texas Girl. Oh, Margaret. Yeah, she's brilliant. A few years back doing this. Uh, bought a kit, I think that means, and never used it. Well, there you go. Take it with you and, and use it. I tend to use mine if I'm parting with a lot of money. Uh -huh. uh, and I judge it on the item and the location and so forth. But I test them more at home. I carry my acid with me, but I, but then again, I'm experienced and I don't pull it out that often now, but I right. use it at home a lot. And if, as you know, I got my antique shop here. If people come in, there is so much fake silver now. And a lot of the fake silver is stamped 925. 
uh, shockingly, you can buy the 925 die stamp uh, mm. off eBay. Shouldn't be allowed. Should be illegal. 375, 925, they can buy the die stamps on eBay. And people will go around and they'll just stamp it. Or the one they do now is they'll take a solid silver lobster claw, which is the clasp, off a genuine big heavy chain, get a silver plate one and put the solid silver link and solder it on. And then you're buying 10, 15 ounces of silver plate for one little lobster claw. If you're parting with money on anything heavy, I would recommend you test. Yeah. If you're not experienced, as in 10, 20 years experience, I would test. I still test now. When people come in, I'm not being nasty, but there are a lot of people that come in and try it on. And they'll intentionally come to a shop like myself, open, I don't know a lot, and they'll be in with the fakes. I have so much fake brought into me over the door. Um, I can tell a lot of it now through through I, because mm. it's been, you know, I've dealt with a lot of it. But if something comes in and it looks really, really good, the only way for me to know is I'll test it and I'll test it in front of them. And I'll yeah. tell them the price. I'll say, this is the price I'll give you, providing it doesn't test up as fake. If you let me file into it and test it, and it's fine, I'll pay you. And you know the ones that are fake because they walk out the door. Yeah. I was going to say, do they just go? Yeah, yeah. yeah they walk out the door. When, the minute they know I'm going to acid test it, a lot of them walk out the door and say, no, you're not acid test this. What's the problem? I've just told you if it comes up as real, <laughs> you'll have any money. Yeah. Um, I think we've kind of answered Peter's question there. Is it practical to test at a car boot? Edward was, was just saying that, yeah, you, you tend to do it at home most of the time. Um, I'm thinking of taking a chance on a load of silvery looking stuff and testing it at home. Yeah, I reckon that's a good plan. I think I would be inclined to have more of a go at it now. Uh, and if I've got one of these testing kits set at home, I'll, I'll feel safe that I can test it and then sell it as what it is. Can I yeah. say, if you're going to gamble like that, and you're not going to test the stuff before you buy it, take it on the quality of the item. You can get some really good antique silver plate that is top quality, but more often than not, you can tell silver plates from silver just from the sheer quality and the finish and the weight and everything. You can see a difference with a trained eye. You can see a difference on a lot of it. Uh, Kirsten is in, says thumbs up for Walter and his vast knowledge. There you go. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Good to see you, Kirsten. Hope you're well. Um, I'm just going to scroll, scroll back, see if we missed any on the way. Uh, oh, Stu's in, says I already test silver with an acid kit. Uh, it's a good thing to learn to do. Okay. Hi, Stu. <laughs> uh ali says that was easier than i, I imagine yes yeah, same i i really thought i don't know what i imagined but i thought it would be a lot more complicated it was um it's like oh was that it great <laughs> for the sake of 23 pound right and understand it's exactly the same process for testing gold right you just look at the book and it'll tell you the different colors right it's the exact same process if you want to test gold so you imagine now for 23 pound how much money you can save by not buying fake how much more confident you'll feel if you take it with you and you see somebody selling something for 40 quid or 50 quid and you think, I'm really nervous. Even if it's all marked and you're nervous, drop a bit of acid on it. It doesn't matter. If they're yeah. genuine sellers, right, and they're happy for you to buy it at their price and you say to them, as long as I can test it, I will buy it, nine out of ten of them will say, yes, test it. Yeah. Don't start and filing the product in front of them, whatever you do. But, uh, you know, if, um, if it's like a, a loose chain, yeah, you know, like um, a big man's chain with interlocking links. Yeah. Open it up and where the links rub, test it in where the links rub because that will have already worn the silver plate off. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, the testing kit that you bought there, that comes with that book with all of the colors in and the, and the instructions. It comes with all the instructions for silver and gold, everything. I've tested it all. It tells yeah, you all okay. the colors you're looking for. It's a fabulous set and it's not a lot of money at £23. Right. I would definitely recommend it. Okay. Um, and you do need to file. I'm not so fast on a magnet, but you definitely need a file. Um, so when see. you get a full set like that, when you get a full little set that goes in a nice neat little case like that, Nick, in your bag, and that, you can put it together in your bag. It's not really taking up any room, is it? No, no, that's perfect. In your bag, a couple of sealable bags, whatever, in your bag, because I, I actually got on the car boot sale with my bag, 
because I had to buy a lot of jewellery and I, I don't mess about. I have it and it goes straight into my bag. Um, and these are in the little pouch. They really take up no room at all. And it's good to have on it. Um, quickly, can you ask Edward what era is selling best? If we're talking about silver, I, I would expect here. So what era? You've got specific eras that are selling really well, as in Art Deco and Georgian. But in total honesty, it goes on the item and the maker. Mm. It really does. Um, you, know, you can have Victorian silver that sells well. What was the one I mentioned in the last video? I can't think. Um, obviously, a little box by Nathaniel Mills now will be hundreds of pounds. To be honest, it goes on the maker, it goes on the item. A little novelty piece of silver made 30, 40 years ago can go as much as a Georgian piece of silver. It, it, I wouldn't say an era or an, an age in, in general goes. Obviously, Georgian silver, because you're talking it's 200-year-old, anything Georgian sells. But to be honest, though, any silver, I never struggle. If I want to sell my silver, I sell it. Mm -hmm. um, did you see that brass-looking spoon I bought at a car boot sale? i done a, a reseller video on it. I paid a fiver. They thought it was brass. Mm. When I got it home, it was literally, it was, you know, it was like that, a parcel spoon, gold plated on solid silver and i got it up for 150 pound and that i think it's only like 30 40 year old so they're plated silver with gold yeah yeah wow gold on silver yeah. yeah and they thought it was brass they sold it to me as brass and i bought that off a dealer it was that heavy she didn't even look to see if it was silver or gold she just automatically assumed because it weighed a ton she went, yeah. that's brass and chucked it down and i bought it for a fiver Wow. Always a nice spoon. <laughs> <Top work. laughs> um, okay. Oh, Lex is in. There's a Hi, guy Lex. there's a guy at the Bridge End Car Boot who literally follows me around the place looking at the stuff I pick up. Is that you? <laughs> no, me, no, no, no. If if Lex sees me, she says hello. But um obviously take that as a compliment, Lex, because he obviously watches your channel, knows you know what you're doing, and he's he's obviously trying to pick up tips off what you were looking at. So just take us a compliment. Don't worry. Do you know, I can't go to auctions no more because if I put my hand up, people say, oh, well, he's bid and I want it. Right. And the price goes to the point I can't afford. Uh, look at that. That's good. Yeah. Christmas. Drink. That would be hard. You wouldn't forget it and you wouldn't lose it, would you? And that's could... actually very good. I didn't even know they'd done them and that is really good. You could, you could have it on your left hand and then just be touching your stuff. The on... only problem I see with that Right. It was yes. When you go through the jewelry boxes, you'd be like, yes, get off. <laughs> <laughs> I must see it, it, honestly. It's just stuck to me. <laughs> yeah, trying to eat your dinner and your knife and fork's getting stuck to your hand. Yeah. There's a slight <laughs> flaw in that one, Chris, but I like the idea. I do like it, huh? Um Peter has a question. I've no idea on prices. How much would you pay for a simple silver or gold band, or is that difficult to answer? Well, as we talked about in the last video. If you're buying under scrap, you're safe. Scrap value on silver is about 30 pence, 35 pence a gram. Um, a bangle is about 10, 20 grams. So you're paying between three and six pound, something like that for a bangle and you know you're safe on scrap. Until you get um, experienced, stick to buying silver, gold, whatever there is under scrap value. And if you go back to the last video we were talking about, we covered that in general, in depth, to be honest with you. Yeah. We did. We talked so, quite a lot about that. To know the scrap value, that you've got to know the weights. So you've got to carry one of those pocket scales then. You or, have. You have yeah. to, believe it or not, right? It's, I can pick a bangle up or bracelet up, right, and know roughly is it one ounce or two ounce. A ring, you know, is like four or five grams. If it's a gold one, it's two or three grams. Standard ring. For a lady in gold is two grams. A ring in silver can be 1.5 grams if it's a thin one. You just work on that. You mm. know, if you get a really nice, thick, heavy belcher chain for a man, you can be up 100 grams. So buying that under scrap, you pay 30, 35 pound. The sellers yeah. over the moon, they've had 30, 35 quid for a silver chain. And you were thinking, well, it's under scrap price. Exactly. Right. And I mean, Peter and I are kind of in the same boat with this, you know, just new to it. But what you just explained is experience. Experience pays. You know, and you, you've, you've handled hundreds, if not thousands, of gold and silver items. I've handled hardly any. So I'm not going to, you know, that will come in time, I guess, if I start getting into it. I remember going around with Tom, Tom the English picker, who's always yeah. been into his gold and silver and jewellery. 
and he would look in a charity shop cabinet and go there's a gold ring he could he could tell it by color yeah and, get it out, and then he'd get a thing yep how much and, he, and he's away and it's like i look in there i just see a sea of rings do you know <laughs> last week you and i done a video on vintage toys and you yeah. gave me an eye opener on how much money i'm walking past every day by not looking at toys genuinely anybody that walks the car boot sale charity shops now and does not dig through the jewelry boxes is just handing money back you would not believe i bet you i have 10 20 kilos of silver every year out of car boot sales just silver mm. and i buy my silver for pound and two pound a piece i don't pay proper money well i've i have been to thousands of boot sales i've stood in front of you know tens if not hundreds of thousands of stalls and i have never looked for jewelry I've never looked. I must have seen a hundred, you know, the rummage boxes, the old jewelry box. Sometimes they bring the whole jewelry box, don't they? And it's like, okay. Nick, it's not just jewelry. What about a nice silver jug? You can get two or three hundred pounds for a silver jug. What about a silver pair candlesticks? Yeah. See them on the table, pick them up and look for the hallmark. If it's not hallmarked, look at the way. Yeah, right? so you look into like on the rims and things like that, or where it's been lifted for a hundred years or whatever. You're looking for signs of way. If you can't see another color coming through and you can see scratches and it's still the same color going through, there's a good chance you've got a piece of silver. Because mm. if you imagine the silver plate is so thin on modern silver now, if you pick a pair of candlesticks up and they got a, a scratch in them and somebody scratched them, yeah, or split and you can't see a different color metal, then you want to be looking if they're silver. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I'm, I'm going to be looking now. This is the thing. It's like when we, it's kind of like a, um a knowledge sharing thing we've got going on here it's like i've been i've been inspiring you to look at toys and vintage stuff and yeah. I'm, I'm so inspired just to have a go really just to broaden my knowledge on it this is and i'll be funny you couldn't get easier hmm. um okay let's see if we've got any more questions we'll take a few more and we'll think about wrapping up um Great. Would love. Would like to learn about hallmarks. I'll get myself a book. Well, I think I copied the links that Edward shared of some of the reference books. Um, so take a look below the video uh, and click through to those because they were ones that Edward recommended uh, as a starting point. But that wasn't um, a hallmark book. We actually, in the last video, we talked about it and we said, don't bother wasting your money on a full set of hallmark books. Get the little book that we put in the video in the link, mm -hmm. which is like a pocket guide. That's but the use the website that we provided in the last video and it'll give you every hallmark and every maker free of charge. Yeah. Save you money. That's it. I think all of the links I copied below, the link to the, the site you use for, for selling, for getting um, current prices, uh, yeah. the, the Bojangles, was it, or something? Yeah, yeah, that's it. All of those are there below because I thought that would be a handy reference for this video yeah. as well. So, yeah. so click on those links and have a browse around and see if you find something that's useful um let's see what else we've got oh double karma there says uh look on the bojangles site yeah there you go link for that should be below um oh rj says love watching edward's channel and others in the in this field good Thank you. um all right let's see what we've got <clears throat> i can't see the chat up here so i, I can't get involved <laughs> no, that's fine that's fine um Wow, I've missed a lot of this. Let me feel. Go to the bottom. Um, Sarah is in. Welcome. Feeling very inspired. Good. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks to Edward for steering me away from some fake silver on eBay a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I had a uh, text message and a couple of photos. Good stuff. Um. Lex says, jewellery is the first thing I look at, and I normally just buy the lot. Do you know why that's the first thing she looks at? Because you can buy a gold ring in a costume jewellery box or a jewellery box for a pound. You get it all. It could be a diamond, 18 karat gold. You sell it for four or five hundred pounds. That is why. And if you can't sell it and it's broken or it's missing its diamonds, you've still got, bearing in mind, 18 karat gold is about, I want to guess, 28 to 30 pound per gram and a mm. wedding band can be four to six grams work that i'll do the math 180 quid just in scrap yeah that's why we all get in the jewelry boxes first it's just yeah. a no 
I, I actually saw Lex in Bridge End about a year ago. Um, and she came running up to me. Look what I've just had. Two rings off a woman who knew what she was selling, an engagement and wedding band, and sold them to Lex for something like a ten or something stupid. Yeah, you said that. Right, how, how much did you pay for them, Lex? Because it wasn't a lot of money. And she came running up to me so excited that she bought them off. And she knew what she was selling. She knew yeah. they were gold. She said, I just want rid of them. That's the mentality sometimes. Um, magnetic rings are available from conjuring and magic suppliers. Well, you can have to have a look and find a link and put a link in the description from Nick. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a look, see what I can find. I'm sure there'll be some on Amazon. Um, I bet there are. There's everything on Amazon. Um, right, let's end on this one before we wrap it up. Hi, is all gold plated jewelry marked as gold plated and, and silver as well? Are they are they marked as such? A lot of them are marked EPNS or GP for gold plated or SP for silver plated. EPNS is electroplated nickel silver, things like that. Or you can get EPBN, electroplated, uh, electroplated Britannia metal, EPBM. Uh, it's all, do you know, even on old silver, they used to do such a thing as fake hallmarks uh, to make it look like silver. They weren't real hallmarks. They were fake hallmarks on silver plate to make yep. it. So when people had silver plate and people come in the house, they used to think, wow, that's impressive because people couldn't tell the difference between Sheffield plate and silver. So they put fake hallmarks on there. Yeah. So no, it's not all a mark. A lot of it is marked silver plate or EPNS or plated, things like that. These tongs that we've used, for example, today are, don't worry, they're going in the scrap box. <laughs> <laughs> I've ruined them anyway. Uh, they are, as you see there, they're, they're Plated. Yeah, okay. Should say A1 and plated on them. So I knew these were silver plated anyway. I ruined them by over filing them. Uh, that's why we weren't worried about them. But I done the filing just to show you. I wanted you to be able to see a clear reaction rather than a tiny spot. So you said they're going in the scrap box, but surely because they're just plate, you can't, you can't cash the them in. Huh? Silver plate is brass. Oh, so you're going to, right, scrap them as brass. I, okay. I collect brass, I collect copper, I collect silver, I collect gold. And then okay. at Christmas, I weigh it in. <laughs> yeah. So if you go to an auction and you see a big silver lot or silver plate lot, and it's going for a few quid, you buy it. You test first or you check for any solid silver. Then you check for any good quality silver plate that you can sell. And then everything else, you go like this and you go in a bucket. And then at Christmas time, you weigh it in, you get four pound a kilo on brass. Mm -hmm. that's a past <laughs> fantastic tip to end on okay uh let me just get to the end in the chat um oh lex says i've still got them too in my savings account do you know that is exactly what as dealers do we need a pension pot and my pension pot is gold and silver just like yeah. lexus yeah yeah fantastic um there's a suggestion there for a future video. Could you do a glass stroke crystal video in the future? How to tell the age of it? Well, maybe. Um, yeah. let's, let's touch on that, actually. Uh, for those of you that are, are new to these chats we've got going on, Edward and I have decided to try and do a regular ongoing thing. So every couple of weeks, there'll be a video reverting from Edward's channel. The link for that's below. So please go over and sub now, and then you'll be able to, to catch the next video. Um, so the next one will be on Edward's channel where I'm going to be talking about various aspects of my business. And then these ones on my channel are going to be Edward explaining to a newbie about whatever. And at the moment, we're talking about precious metals and silver in particular. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could expand into other. Yeah, we could definitely get the crystal once we finish with precious metals. Um, yeah. I, crystal is one thing I deal in a lot of, um, as you probably know. Uh, Watford, Swarovski, you name it, I buy it all. And I got perfect websites for that, uh, for finding patterns, everything that I'll share in the video. So give it a give it a little time. Once we finish the precious metals, we'll go into other aspects, definitely. Yeah. Because it brings I mean, something else to your channel and you were bringing something else to my channel. Exactly. I mean, as people know, there's not much information about antiques on here because I, I'm currently not really, that's not what I do. Um, but if, if you are, yeah, but if you are thinking of getting into that field, Edward's channel is a great resource for that. So please go over and have a look around the videos and, and, and see if they take your fancy and, and make sure to subscribe. And we'll be on Edward's channel in two weeks from now. 
uh, where we, we haven't decided what we're going to talk about next, but I'll be talking about another topic. But put it this way, at the moment, you go to car boot sales, right? And you buy electronics, you buy toys, you buy car parts, you buy, you buy almost everything anyway, right? I know. It's soon, right? You're just going to go, how much for the stall? <laughs> and you'll be buying it all. <laughs> My wife will be cringing at you tell, telling me to do that. But do yeah, I, 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 can, I can recommend a good price on storage containers. <laughs> oh, don't tell you. Well, what we'll have to do, I mean, th this summer boot sale season, we'll have to set each other a goal. I'm going to try and find some silver and gold, and you've got to try and find some nice vintage toys. Or well, more the point, what we'll do, I'll take a trip up to you one day in the summer, and we'll go to a big boot sale together, and we'll see yeah. what we can get. You yeah. go that way, I'll go that way, and we'll meet up at the end, and we'll do a comparison video on what we've bought. Oh, man. Sure we can do then do two different dealers, what can you source when you've got different knowledge at the same boot sale? Yeah. That one for us. I don't mind the trip. I'll have a nice hotel stay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll work on that. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Edward, as ever. That was, that was fan fascinating and really helpful. So I appreciate that. I'm a couple of uh, and the links below are for the stuff that we've talked about. Um, please go through. And if you're interested in buying any of that stuff, I get a tiny kickback from Amazon, but it doesn't cost you any more. And I'd really appreciate that. So the link to the, the exact same kit we were using is below and those other reference books and stuff. Thanks to everyone in the chat. Thanks if you gave us some questions. We actually answered a lot of the questions today as well. We did well. And uh, yeah. So quick and easy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining me and we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Take care.